Now, as the man behind Father Ted and the IT crowd, Graham was not so long ago one of the most cherished members of the metropolitan elite. But after he was booted off Twitter for defending the rights of biological women, he's become a victim of cancel culture. So does he believe that Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter could change his fortunes? Well, I'm delighted to say that Graham joins me now. And Graham, uh, I wrote about you actually in my column for the Mail Online yesterday because I, I, I said that as alongside uh, probably Dr. Robert Malone on the COVID side and Donald Trump on the political side, you were one of those high profile silenced folk who Musk, I think, needs to immediately reinstate to the platform once he takes it over. I mean, do, do you think that will happen? And do you think we'll make a difference? Can one man make a difference uh, to getting the voice back for people like you? Gosh, that's a very good question. I, um, I, I'm not sure. It, 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 it's kind of like a, a system-wide problem we have at the moment. Yeah. I think that Elon Musk, he may well solve the problem of Twitter, but there's also things like um, Wikipedia, which, uh, yes. which has very, very heavily biased uh, um, moderators. Uh, my solicitor actually watched my page and saw that if you changed uh, an entry like I, he would my solicitor tried to change an edit from anti-trans to pro-feminist for instance and it was changed back within 15 minutes wow. so these kind of yeah so these little things are happening all over the place i had i had a shop that i start that i started to sell uh, I had a T-shirt of a cartoon of myself with the words "Reality is real" on it, and we we very carefully went through it to make sure that we weren't selling anything that could be seen as transphobic. The only thing we we thought could get us into trouble was a joke about uh, uh, men cheating at women's sports, so we deliberately left out left it out. Uh, it was up for a day, and then it was it was taken down because it was mass reported. So all so of these, these all... tech companies work together. So, so, so let's just go back one step, uh, Graham, because it was Twitter that actually caused your cancellation. And, and you talk about this mass reporting, and that's what happened to you because yep. you spoke up for the rights of biological women, just in the same way, by the way, that someone like J.K. Rowling has now done. But you did it first, or you were one of the first high-profile people with a big showbiz profile, very accepted, by the way, in that li li uh, in that London liberal bubble. But it was Twitter yeah. that 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 actually caused uh, your cancellation. So, can you just explain what happened? Well, I'd say I would actually say I was cancelled before Twitter. Uh, the Guardian kind of. Uh, uh, published a story about me taking the word of a, uh, a person who was using their trans identity basically to con people. And they used that to say that I was harassing trans people online. Twitter then basically just ran with this image of me that was being amplified everywhere by, by loads of Twitter users um, and banned me without telling me why. They, they, they told the press it was because I was supposedly misusing the platform. But I had a number of rules to make sure that I always stayed ahead of Twitter's uh, Twitter's um, terms and conditions. You know, I, I never misgendered anyone. Um, I, I was always trying to play by their rules. But just like Megan Murphy in Canada, um, you just get banned for you know, random reasons. And the last tweet that I was, that I uh, tweeted, and I, so I guess it was for this, simply said, men aren't women though. You know what I mean? So, so it's like yeah. uh, just which Robert Winston arbitrary. has confirmed, one of our eminent scientists, just just recently. No, I mean I thought yeah. the cancellation of you from Twitter was really the start of of what became a snowball of loads of people uh, stating provable facts being censored by big tech. And obviously this has now resulted in, on Elon Musk's purchase. But what was so shocking, Graham, is for you, it obviously resulted in total career and personal ruin. I mean, you are the man behind Father Ted. And, and I'm correct in saying, aren't I, that, that now the creators or the co-creators or the people who own the Father Ted brand, I guess, are trying to pay you off because they're so terrified of having you involved, even though essentially you are the man behind the show. 
Yeah, and, you know, I'm the man behind the musical. I, it was my idea. Um, a lot of the concepts for the songs are mine. Um, you know, it's been my baby for, for about seven or eight years. And uh, it's just extraordinary to think that, that just to please a bunch of extremists, and they are extremists. Every Anyone who believes that a, a, a woman can have a penis is an extremist, you know, and a homophobic extremist at that, you know, because lesbians do not have a penis. Um, uh, you know, gay men do not have vaginas. This is homophobia and conversion therapy. And and for standing up to it, I'm being told by Hattrick and Sonia Friedman Productions that I'm somehow in the wrong. And it's um, it's it's just outrageous. It's absolutely outrageous. And and I, I you're right. It is a completely metropolitan elite thing. All these people are terrified of America because America is where is where this ideology is coming from. I think it's a form of American cultural imperialism, in fact. And um, and they want careers over there. So they're all just kind of pussyfooting around this ridiculous ideology that no one outside of no, no one in the real world believes. I'm sure I'm sure you've heard the phrase uh, uh, um, cis, you know, or cis woman. You know, this is a phrase that has to be explained every time it's said, because ordinary people never understand what it means, because the word trans isn't explained either. So this is a completely confusing, incoherent uh, ideology that we're all supposed to go along with that needs eternal training from the likes of Stonewall, who are getting, you know, bundles of cash from the confusion that they're supposedly solving. And all the while, you know, a, a lesbian a woman of color today collapsed from the stress of the trial, the case that Stonewall has, has put her under, you know? I mean, it's just, I, I just find it extraordinary that I'm in the position where I'm, I'm fighting nearly the entire left on this, you know, who I thought were progressive and who well, I indeed. thought were on the... And that's the point, isn't it? Because to me, this isn't about politics. This is not a left or right issue. Because if you look at someone like J.K. Rowling, she's very much on the left of politics too. And she's been cancelled by exactly the same sort of people who walked away from you. Well, you know, I, and, and if, you, if you ask people to, to say what she said that was wrong in her beautiful, compassionate essay, about why single sex spaces are important to women like her, who's a survivor of domestic abuse, um, they don't have an answer because she didn't say anything offensive. Her, her piece was completely compassionate. But you have this strange kind of um, whispering campaign where rumors are reported as facts and, and everything is a dog whistle, you know? Everything is a dog whistle. So, so you really can't say anything. They've given, they've given women no room in which they can maneuver and and argue for their rights. No room. They've stolen the words that are essential for these women to argue for their rights. And it's, uh, sorry, that's a, that's a reminder that I'm doing this show. I just rang out. Um, <laughs> You're on. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, but like, you know, they, they're putting women in an, in an absolutely impossible situation. And the reason I added my voice to it all was because, you know, I had a big platform and these women were, were suffering in silence. They, they, you know, one of the things I found is that when you put a spotlight onto this behavior, onto the bullying and the harassment and the, and the vile abuse, I mean, the things that have been said about Alison Bailey today. An Irish Times book reviewer said, Alison Bailey, dead by dawn. That's an Irish Times, that's a book reviewer for the Irish Times. I know, know? And we see what I mean, they're saying about J.K. Rowling. Well, look, Graham, thank you for being, and I know this B word is, is used a little too often these days, but I am going to say it to you. Thank you for being brave because when you oh, know really you're cool. walking away from your career and when you know you're walking away from financial security, but you do it because you so fundamentally believe something, for me, that is the example of bravery. And I hope you come back soon and we'll talk more about it, but that's... Graham Linehan, the creator. Thank you, Father Ted. 